Hello, YouTubers. So let's go ahead and uh, actually jump into actually creating a class. Uh, for that, I'm going to start a new project in here. I'm just going to call it the Windows, Windows Form Application 1. Um, to add a class to your solution, all you need to do is uh, right-click your solution name, go to Add, and then go to Class. Okay. The class that I'm going to create for this sample is going to be a Books class. I'm going to create Add, and now you can see that we have a new .cs file in here called books. Um, at this point, uh, .NET creates, puts enough code in here that we actually have the class ready. We don't have anything in the class, but we actually have the class ready. So let's go ahead and jump into the form, the forms here, and uh, let's check it out how to initialize an object. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and type book, and I'm going to, because that's my class, and I'm going to create new book. Okay, At this point, New book is not an object. It's simply a variable of the type book. Okay, to actually create the object, you need to say uh, your variable name is going to be equal to new book. Okay. Now, new book becomes an object. Okay. Um, you can also do this in all in the same line. You can say that your class name, um, object name is going to equal to your class, new class. Okay, So this right here is the exact same thing as, as this right here. Um, like I said before, when we created the class, we didn't add anything to it. So when we call the object, uh, IntelliSense is not going to detect anything uh, in there. So let's go ahead and, and uh, add some uh, class members to our object. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this and because all one line is good back to my object and then I'm going to create a few public uh, members to it so uh, what do we have in the book we have the book name so let's say book name and then we also have uh, public and we also have an author uh, what else we have public train um, publishing date so these are all members of the books class okay I'm gonna go ahead and save it I don't think we actually have to save it let me see I'm just gonna go ahead and then call my object dot and now I have those members available the reason why I have them available at the object level is because I declared my members with the public keyword. So I can, I can go ahead and say my new book author is going to be equal to Fabio Scopel, which is me. I have never written a book, but I'm going to. Um, and on my example, on my on my previous video, I was telling you that you could create many houses from the same template. It's the same thing in here. I can I just created a new book with author's name Fabio. I can also create. Uh, a new book one here. See, I'm using the same class, but this one it's gonna be made by John Doe. Okay. So now I have two objects, one called new book and one called new book one, uh, from the same class, but they both have different authors. Okay. So those are all public members. We can also create um, static members. And static members are not accessible by the object. They're only accessible by the class. So these are all public. So let's go ahead and create a public static int um, books sold. Okay. So this member right here, book sold, it's not going to be accessible by any of the objects. So if I try to call that member, book sold, new book dot book sold, you see that you don't see it. Um, it's only accessible by the class. So books dot book sold. In the same way that all public uh, non-static members are only accessible by the object. In this case, let's say book, uh, book sold, I want to keep track of the total number of books sold. So let's say that I sold that one and that one. At this point, I have two books. So that's why it's not 
it's not wise to keep track at the at the object level, but also uh, but instead keep track at the class level. You can also create um, constant members. So let's say public constant integer rental base. It's going to be five. So in this case, when you have the constant keyword, it's implicitly static, and it's only accessible by the class as well. So let's just say any one of the books that let's just say that this is I'm 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 creating uh, a class book and I'm adding the business logic that any one of the books let's say that I'm writing this for for uh, a, a book rental store and they need a program that regardless of which book every time you rent a book every time you check it out the max number of rental days equals five so in this case the object itself it's not going to have that uh, max number of uh, days but the class itself because that's where we should keep that's that's where we should keep that uh, that value because regardless of the book regardless if it's a book by Fabio or by John Doe or whoever that's go always going to be the same number of uh, days so this is that just a, a quick overview of uh, class members keywords and how to uh, create a class uh, stay tuned we're going to talk about properties and methods next video thank you for watching bye